Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be showing you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. First up, I tried a new recipe for a chicken bacon ranch pasta. This is from The Cozy Cook. I'll have her recipe linked in the description box below. To get started in this pot, I'm going to add in a couple slices of bacon and I'm just going to cook that until it is crisp. Once it's crisp, with a slotted spoon, I'm going to remove it from the pot and place it onto a paper towel lined plate and set it aside. Here I have a chicken breast that I cut into cubes. I'm going to add that to the pot. And then I'm seasoning this to taste with salt, pepper, Italian seasoning, onion powder, and garlic powder. And then I'm going to cook this. My heat is on about medium, and I'm just going to cook this until the chicken is cooked all the way through to 165 degrees internal temperature. Once that's done, I'm going to remove the chicken with my slotted spoon and place it onto the same plate that the bacon is and set that to the side. In this pot, I'm adding in some butter, and then I'm going to add in some garlic. I cooked that garlic for about 30 seconds, then I'm adding in the half and half, the dry ranch dressing mix, and the shredded cheddar cheese. While stirring that on about medium low heat, I'm going to cook that just for a couple minutes until the cheese is melted. And then I'm adding my cooked pasta. You can use whatever pasta shape you prefer. I'm using rotini pasta. I cooked it according to the package instructions and drained it really well. Once the pasta and sauce is stirred together, I'm adding back in the cooked bacon and chicken and stirring that until it's well combined, and then that's it. Here's the finished pasta, and next I'll show you our plates. All right, to go along with the pasta, I just made some side salads, and then we have the chicken bacon ranch pasta. This was good, it wasn't great. We didn't feel like it had a whole lot of flavor, but to be completely honest, I don't know that it was the recipe or that it was me. And by that I mean, so I halved this recipe, which I apologize, I should have mentioned this earlier, but I have the original recipe, but I had a little bit more rotini pasta than half the box, if that makes sense. So I went ahead and used as much pasta as what I had and to compensate for that I added a little bit more of the half and half and so I don't know if it didn't have a lot of flavor because I added a little bit more milk so I should have compensated for that with a little bit more seasoning or I don't know if it was because I did not add any additional salt I was worried that between the dry ranch dressing mix and the uh, cheddar cheese and the bacon and the chicken that it would be too salty so I didn't add any extra salt maybe I should have so but I'll definitely be making this again and I will one follow the recipe more closely <laughs> and then two I will taste it before I serve it and adjust the seasonings which I normally do that and I know I've mentioned that several times on my channel to taste before you eat taste before you eat but this night I was just rushing and trying to get dinner on the table and to be honest I just completely forgot but it wasn't bad at all it was good it just we just felt like it needed a little bit more flavoring but it was still good I would recommend and you all give this recipe it was try it was super easy to make really quick and budget friendly for dinner the next night i made chili now a quick note about chili so for years and years and years i made chili just i would open up the pantry and use whatever it is that i felt in the mood to use that day but my chili kind of always tasted different which isn't necessarily a bad thing because you know it just depended on what i used that day but for about the past year I have referred to uh, this chili recipe from Spaceships and Laser Beams. I'll have it linked in the description box below. I don't follow it exactly. I don't use the same measurements, but I just kind of use the list of ingredients as a reminder to myself of what I want to make to use in my chili that day, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> Hopefully it does. But I'll have the recipe linked in the description box below. It's a good recipe and it's really easy to use. Let me show you how I make this. All right, I've got my Dutch oven here. It's on about medium heat. I have some already cooked ground beef on hand. This was in my freezer. I just thawed it out. So this is what I'm going to use today. Normally, I would use just raw ground beef or raw ground turkey. I would place it in the pot, add in some chopped onions, minced garlic, some chopped up bell peppers if I have them on hand. And then I would cook that until the meat was cooked all the way through and then drain it if it needed to be drained. But again, today I'm going to use this already cooked ground beef. Next, I'm going to add in my seasonings, and I just do this to taste. I'm going to add in some cumin, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, some paprika, chili powder, chipotle chili powder, and a little bit of cayenne, not too much cayenne. 
And while I'm doing that, just a quick note, absolutely make this your own. Use whatever beans and seasonings, vegetables you like, make it your own. So I like dark red kidney beans and my chili. The recipe says to drain and rinse them. I just put it in with the juice and everything. I'm adding a can of tomato sauce. And then for the tomatoes, I normally use petite diced tomatoes, but today I have these fire roasted on hand. I thought that would be good, so I'm going to use that. I'm adding in my tomato paste and then adding in the salt and pepper. And then I like to add a little bit of brown sugar to my chili. This one, it gives a little bit of sweetness, just a touch to kind of counterbalance, you know, all the chili powders that we have. But two, it also helps with the acidity of the tomatoes. If you don't want to add sugar, you can also add a little bit of baking soda and that does the same thing. I stirred this together and checked the consistency. I did want to add just a little bit more liquid, so I added in a half a can of water. And a quick note, as usual, I am having the recipe, which again, it will be linked in the description box below. So I brought this up to a boil. I reduced this to a simmer, covered this with a lid, and as you can see, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning this day. And so I just wanted this to cook super, super low and slow and cook all day long. But really, I mean, you can cook this for 30 to 45 minutes, but with chili, the longer you let it cook, the better it is, and it's always better the next day. So this is great to make ahead. You can also cook this in your slow cooker. Just add everything to your slow cooker and cook it on low all day while you're at work or running errands. So here's the finished chili. Here is the finished plate. I just made some grilled cheese, and that was dinner this night. Super delicious. For dinner the next night, I did not feel like cooking at all. So it's official, I'm old. I injured myself and I don't even know how I did it. Actually, that's a lie, I do know how I did it. So I pulled a muscle in my leg. Don't know what muscle I pulled. I've never pulled that before in my life, but it hurt so bad. Like I could not put weight on that leg. It hurt to walk. It even hurt when I just was laid down doing nothing and it hurt all the way down into my calf, all the way up into my hip. It was miserable. And you know what I did? I, I wasn't exercising. I wasn't, you know, practicing for a marathon. Y'all, I was walking across the living room and I just stepped wrong <laughs> and injured myself that badly. So I'm officially old. It's happened. <laughs> but anyways, I did not feel like cooking this night at all. So here's what I did. I just cooked up these Tyson chicken strips, cooked them in the air fryer at 400 degrees for about eight or nine minutes, flipped them over, cooked them another eight or nine minutes until they were crispy. I got out this sweet baby Ray's honey mustard for the chicken strips and then to go along with that, I just made some of this thick and creamy macaroni and cheese from Walmart. This is so good. If you've never tried this, I highly recommend it. It's super cheap and it's good. It's so yummy. Just by itself, it's delicious. But what I like to do is add in a slice of American cheese. Um, you know, once I've added in the milk and the butter and the cheese sauce and stirred it, I add in a slice of American cheese and it's delicious, so good. So this was dinner this night really quick and easy and that is what I needed this night not healthy not fancy but hey it was dinner for dinner the next night we ordered takeout from our local favorite Japanese restaurant I did not feel like cooking again this night my leg hurt even worse this day so we started out with some crab rangoons and then I got a crunchy shrimp roll from this restaurant my husband likes I think they call it their maki combo which you get three different sushi rolls and then you get miso soup and salad with ginger dressing so that is what we got this night here is my plate this was so so yummy for dinner the next night, I was feeling much, much better this day, so I was really excited to get back in the kitchen and cook. I tried another new recipe for a chicken and asparagus orzo. This is from Julia Pacheco. I'll have her channel linked in the description box below just in case you're not familiar with her. This was delicious. This was so good. My husband raved about this, so we will definitely be making this again, and I highly recommend you all give it a try. It's a one-pot recipe, so it was super quick and easy to put together. Let me show you how I made it. First, I'm going to take my chicken breast. Here, this package has three breasts, but I only used one for this recipe. I did half the recipe. I seasoned one side of the chicken with some salt, pepper, paprika, garlic powder, and onion powder. And then I had some avocado oil that I wanted to use up, so I added that to the skillet. It's over about medium heat. Once the chicken was added to the skillet, I went ahead and seasoned the other side, same as the first, just salt, pepper, paprika, onion powder, and garlic powder. I cooked the chicken for about five minutes per side until it was 165 degrees internal temperature. Once it was cooked all the way through, I removed it to a plate and set it aside. 
I'm adding a little bit more oil to the skillet and then I'm going to add in my asparagus. I washed this and then cut it into just bite-sized pieces. I'm cooking this for three to five minutes or until it starts to get tender and then I'm going to set that to the side as well. Once again, I'm adding just a little bit of oil to this skillet. I'm adding in some diced onion. I had some red onion on hand, so that's what I'm going to use. I cooked this for about three minutes until it started to soften. I added in some minced garlic, and then I'm adding in the orzo pasta. I'm going to give that a stir, and I cooked this for about a minute or so, just until the orzo started to get a little bit toasted. Then I'm adding in my liquid. So this is some chicken broth and half and half. I'm adding that, stirring that. I'm going to bring this to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, cover it, and cook this for, the recipe said to cook it for about 10 minutes, but my orzo took closer to about 15 to 18 minutes. You just wanna cook this until the orzo is you know, cooked to your liking, and you do want to make sure that you stir this pretty often. Once the orzo is done, I removed the lid and I'm adding in my Parmesan cheese. The recipe called for grated, but I had some of this shredded on hand, so I wanted to use that up, so that's what I used. I'm adding quite a bit of freshly cracked black pepper, and then I felt like this was just a little bit thick for my particular liking, and I had some heavy cream on hand in the fridge, just a little bit of this little jar, so I added a little splash of that stirred that and then I added back in the asparagus and the recipe did not call for peas but I love peas they're one of my favorite vegetable and I thought that this would be yummy in this and it was it was delicious I had just a little bit of this bag in my freezer so I added that and allowed this just to cook for a couple minutes until those peas were nice and thawed and then that was it here it is finished and for the chicken once uh as the orzo and everything was cooking obviously the chicken was resting so I just cut it in two slices here's the finished plate I laid down some of that orzo and then fan the chicken out on top and like I said we really really enjoyed this this was delicious for dinner the next night I made tuna casserole I mentioned this in my grocery haul but just in case you missed it my husband was out of town this night and there are some things that I make that either my husband doesn't love it's not his favorite but he'll still eat it without complaining about it tuna casserole is not one of those things he is not a fan he will not touch it if I make it for dinner, he's like, honey, thank you for making dinner, but I'm going to make myself a sandwich. So <laughs> when I knew he was going to be out of town this night, I was like, hey, perfect time to make tuna casserole and I'll have leftovers for myself for lunch the next day. So I've made it the same way for years. It's not super complicated at all. It's pretty simple. Let me show you how I make it. In this pot, I have some egg noodles that I boiled according to the package instructions. I drained it really well. To that, I'm going to add in two cans of tuna that I've drained really well. This is tuna and water. You can use whatever you prefer. Next, I'm going to add a can of cream of chicken and mushroom soup. This is not one of each. It's one can that has both combined. You can use whatever your preference is. Then I'm going to add in a can of milk. Stir that around. I'm going to season this with some pepper. And then I like to add sweet peas into the tuna casserole. You can use uh, frozen mixed vegetables, canned mixed vegetables, or whatever vegetables you like. If you don't like vegetables in it, you can of course just serve them on the side. Next, I'm going to add in some shredded cheddar cheese and I'm going to stir that until the cheese is melted. The oven is preheating to 350 degrees. I have sprayed this casserole dish with some cooking spray. I'm going to add in my tuna noodle mixture and then sprinkle a little more shredded cheese on top. And then that's it. I'm gonna place this into the preheated oven and bake this for about 20 minutes. Um, instead of the shredded cheese on top, sometimes I do breadcrumbs or what's also really good, and this is you know kind of a throwback, is to take plain potato chips and crush those up and add that. That's really good, it adds a nice crispness. Okay, here's the finished casserole and then here's my finished plate. Super easy dinner, really comforting and yummy. Dinner the next night, I had some chicken wings that I bought on Markdown at Food Lion a few weeks ago. They were in my freezer. I wanted to use them up, so I decided to make that. And to go along with that, I decided to make a pizza dip. I love this pizza dip. I think I've shared it before on my channel, but I want to show it again. It's so easy and it's super delicious. This would be great for the upcoming holidays. Let me show you how I make this. This recipe was given to me by my mom's best friend, Leslie. I'll have it typed out in the description box below. In this bowl, I'm adding in the cream cheese. Normally, I just use softened cream cheese, but I had a half a package of whipped cream cheese on hand, so I'm going to use that up. I added it to this bowl, and then I just stirred it a little bit just to add in a little bit of air. Then I'm adding in the sour cream, the garlic salt, 
And then the recipe calls for grated Parmesan cheese, but again, I had some of this shredded Parm on hand. I'm just trying to use it up, so I've added that. And a quick note, because it was just me again this night, and my husband was still out of town, I halved the recipe. I stirred that until it was well combined, and then I'm placing that into a greased baking dish and spreading that out. Here I had about a half a jar of this uh, great value pizza sauce in my fridge. Need to use it up, so I'm going to add that. You can use your favorite pizza sauce, or you could, of course, make your own. Next, I'm going to add the mozzarella cheese. And then for the toppings, I like to just add chopped up pepperoni. You could also use the little mini pepperonis. Those are really good. But you could use whatever toppings you like. You could do chopped bell pepper, chopped onions, black olives, cooked Italian sausage, whatever you like. So I've added my chopped pepperoni. This is going to go into a preheated oven set at 350 degrees and bake this for about 15 to 20 minutes or until it is nice and bubbly. Here are those chicken wings that I got on Markdown at Food Lion. This is the sweet and sassy flavor. There are instructions on how to bake these um, on the back of the package. I decided to cook them in the air fryer. So here's the finished pizza dip. And for those wings, I cooked them at 360 degrees for about seven or eight minutes and then flipped them over and cooked them for another seven or eight minutes. Now these wings, they were good. The flavoring was good, but they were teeny tiny little wings, not a lot of meat on them at all. So it didn't take very long at all for them to cook. You just wanna make sure that you cook these until they're at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Here's a picture of my plate. So I have some of the wings, the pizza dip and the bread. This was yummy. Like I said, those wings were good, but there was not a lot of meat on them at all. They were super, super small, but that pizza dip is one of my favorites. So good. And that's it for this week's video. And I do want to quickly say, if you are in the United States, I hope you and your family have a truly wonderful Thanksgiving day. I hope that you all have a safe holiday, that it's healthy and happy. And, you know, we all are blessed. Sometimes it may not feel, you know, like we have a lot to be grateful for, especially if we're going through hard times or trials or struggles. But there is always always something to be grateful for. And I am so incredibly grateful for my family, for, um, you know, just all the blessings that I have. And I'm especially grateful to each and every one of you for watching my videos, commenting, you know, sharing your lives and your stories with me. I truly appreciate you all. And again, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. And I also hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it and please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And again, have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.